Most people don't even know they have a fatty liver because there are virtually no symptoms associated with it. This condition is typically discovered incidentally when you have your yearly blood work done and your doctor sees some elevations in some specific labs. In this video, I'm gonna go over the five most important labs associated with fatty liver disease. Enjoy. The first two tests are the liver enzymes. Now these are typically ordered on a comprehensive metabolic panel or CMP in the United States. And what these are, are enzymes which exist inside of cells. ALT is more concentrated in the liver cells. AST are also in the liver cells but are in other cells of your body. And normally when you have your blood tested, they're not gonna see elevations of these enzymes in your blood unless you have damage to the cells which contain these enzymes. If those cells become damaged, then the enzymes, they spill out into the bloodstream, and when the lab tests your numbers, they can see elevations in AST and ALT. Now here's an example of a abnormal result. This person had a high AST and high ALT. Normally someone who has more specific liver damage, they're gonna have more elevations in the ALT and that's the case for this patient here. Test number three is the hemoglobin A1C test. This is a measure of your average blood sugar over the past three months. There is a strong association of high blood sugar with fatty liver disease because it is believed that the high blood sugar converts into fat in the liver. So individuals who have insulin resistance, prediabetes, or frankly diabetes, typically will have a higher risk of having fatty liver disease. And this patient here actually has type two diabetes. You can see their hemoglobin A1C is 6.8%, and the lab gives you the references down here. Greater, anything greater than 6.4%, is diabetes. The fourth lab test is triglycerides. Triglycerides are free fats that are in your bloodstream and these are the result of high blood sugar converting into these fats and they may be also due to some dietary causes too if you consume uh, too much fats or if you even had uh, alcoholic beverages the night before you had the blood work done, your triglycerides may be elevated. And there's also a genetic component too. Some people just genetically make more triglycerides. This patient has elevated triglycerides at 248, which is very high. And it's because, like I said before, they have type two diabetes. So all that blood sugar is converting into these triglycerides. The next test, and uh, test number five, is cholesterol. Cholesterol is broken down into several components. The most common ones we look at are the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and the HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Triglycerides will convert into LDL. So in this person's case, it looks like some of their triglycerides are converting into the LDL, increasing their bad cholesterol. And in fact, this person also has elevated VLDL, which is very low density lipoprotein. And that's also another risk factor actually for cardiovascular disease. And it's a risk factor for having fatty liver disease. Now we don't know exactly what causes high cholesterol in every person. It, there is genetic components to it and there is dietary components. The only dietary source of cholesterol that you're gonna get is from animal products. So if you go completely off of animal products and you are still having elevated cholesterol, it could be due to a genetic cause or there may be something else affecting your liver that is making you produce more cholesterol. Long story short though, cholesterol is also something that may be elevated 
when an individual has fatty liver disease. To learn more about what your doctor is not telling you about fatty liver disease, check out some of these other videos. In this one, I go over some lifestyle changes that you could make to help reverse your fatty liver disease. And in this one, I go over a sample treatment plan that I typically would give to one of my patients who has fatty liver disease.